Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part eight of my web design and programming tutorial. Today, I'm going to continue to focus on regular expressions using PHP. If you did not watch part seven of this tutorial, you have to watch it. Otherwise, this will completely confuse you. What I'm doing here is simply taking you through step by step how to find things that people commonly search for inside of text. Here, first off, I'm going to show you how to locate an email address using regular expressions. Okay, so continuing from what we did before, let's say we are demanding that there is either going to be one or more uppercase letters through A through Z, lowercase letters A through Z, numbers, zero through nine, periods, underscores, percent signs, and because I'm using the percent delimiter, which surrounds the regular expression, I have to backslash that, or we're going to allow them to have dashes. Okay, so we're going to box that in and then put a plus sign afterwards. That means that we're requiring them to have at least one of those things that we have defined inside of this box. Then every email address has an at symbol, so we're going to put that at symbol in there, and then we're going to demand that after the at symbol, Again, that they have either uppercase or lowercase letters or numbers 0 through 9, periods or dashes. And we're demanding that there's one or more of those. Then every email address is then followed by a period. But remember, we have to backslash periods because that is used in regular expressions to define any character except for new lines. And then we're going to define again that they are going to have a .com or a .org or whatever. And we're going to put capital letters inside of there, not allow them to put numbers because that's not possible. And we're going to demand that those numbers that precede that period be a minimum minimum of two characters in length and a maximum of four characters in length. And that is how you would define step by step that you want to locate a email file. And I have this email file here in this array. And if I file save it, of course, this isn't going to change, but it was able to go through this array and locate the one thing that met all the rules that define this as an email. And there you see it is on the screen. Now let's say I want to locate a telephone number and I'm choosing to do this through examples. I did a previous tutorial on uh, regular expressions and I did didn't really focus totally in on examples. So that's what I'm doing here. See no real point in doing this again and again and again unless I change it up. Okay, so let's say our telephone number can have parentheses in it. However, it might not. So what do we do in that case? We put down a question mark. We then know that the person is going to be entering numbers 0 through 9. So put a dash inside of there, inside of those brackets. And in the United States anyway, this should be three digits in length. And then we want to escape out the parentheses that might be there or might not. So we're going to put a question mark in again. Then we could potentially have a dash, but we don't know for certain someone's going to enter a dash, so put in another question mark. Then we know that they're going to be entering more numbers between 0 and 9, and we can expect that there's going to be three of them, so we'll do that. Then we're going to put additional brackets, squared off brackets in here, and we know they're going to add a dash, a period, or potentially a space between those numbers. But guess what? We don't know that for a fact, so we're going to put a question mark in there again. Then we know they're going to enter additional numbers inside of here, and they should be four in length. And that is how you specifically would look for a telephone number. If I file save that, you can see it was able to find the only thing that met all the rules for a telephone number, even though social security number was very similar. Guess what? It would have actually came up if there would have been an additional digit inside here, but there wasn't, and hence it's not. So let's look up some more things that we'd like to be able to find. Let's say we want to be able to accept any type of date. This is going to get a little bit more complicated. So let's say we're going to allow them to enter dates. And let me just check here for a second. Either like, for example, 31-01-10, or we could also allow them to put 2010. Or we also, let's say we want them to be able to enter 11-31-2010 or whatever and also allow for the fact that they enter 19. Like let's say we're basically asking them for their birth date. So we know it's gonna fit all those different requirements. We don't know if day's gonna come first, or days are going to come second and months first, or what have you, or if they're going to enter in one digit or two digits, so they could enter a zero or a one, or they could just simply enter a one. But we want to basically make sure that we can find pretty much any result. So we're going to come in here and we're going to say 
that we are going to expect a zero, but not demand that it is entered. Then we are going to expect that they enter digits one through nine. Now this might just focus in on this. So we're gonna accept one through nine that potentially could be followed by a zero, or I put the pipe symbol in there. We're gonna accept either a one or a two, close that bracket off, that is then followed either by a zero or any digit that lies between zero and nine, or we're going to allow them to enter a three that is then followed either by a zero or a one. Remember, it's only gonna pick anything in these brackets. It's only going to pick one of them, unless, for example, I would put in the curly brace and say two. Then it could, but in that case, I don't want it to do that because that wouldn't make sense if I'm looking for a date that's only gonna be two digits. So that's specifically how you would do that. Hopefully this isn't confusing. Going as slow as I think you guys want me to go. Then we are going to expect they might put a dash in, or they might put a period in. Again, we've got to backslash that period. So that would hold if they put a dash or a period in, in there between their dates. And we could also put a question mark in there, not guaranteeing that, but I'm just gonna leave it in this format. And then basically we're just gonna copy exactly what we did before, because we're gonna allow them to enter uh, in the order of month, then day, or day, then month. So this is exactly the same. We're gonna allow them to enter a zero followed by an individual number, or a one, or a two, followed by any digits that's zero through nine, or we're gonna allow them to enter a three that is then followed by either a zero or a one. Now, I know this isn't going to catch if they type in like February 31st, which is a date that doesn't exist, but there's limits to this, and in programming there's always limits. And again, we're gonna type in a dash, and then a backslash, and a period, and then we're going to demand that they either put in a 19 or a 20, because we don't expect anybody to be born any date other than that, but we're not guaranteeing that. We're not going to say we have to have it. Then we expect a number between zero and nine, and we expect that number to be two in length. And if I file save it and come over here and reload it, you can see it was able to find inside of this giant array those things that fit specifically fit the date. And if I change this in any way, it's still going to continue to work. So if I type in 31st, file save, jump over here, hit reload, it's gonna still locate that date. So that's how you would specifically do that. Now I'm gonna show you something that's a little more complicated. If you get this, you can pat yourself on the back. If you don't, this is about almost about as complicated as a regular expression would ever get. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna show you how to guarantee that a password that a user would enter is guaranteed to have at least one uppercase letter, one lowercase letter, one number, have no spaces, can contain either dashes or underscores, and also is at least six characters in length. Here I'm gonna show you another way to define a beginning of a string, which is a backslash A. Remember, it's the same as a caret, but I'm just showing you a couple other different ways of doing things, because I really like regular expressions if you haven't caught on. Now you're gonna see a new code here. Question mark followed by equals. What this is saying is, we will consider that this is a valid match for the string we are looking for, as long as what precedes it is also valid for the string. So what this guy is saying is, oh, well, I'm gonna type in here exactly what I'm looking for. I'm expecting a dash or an underscore, then an A, then followed by a Z, and an uppercase A through Z, and then a zero through nine. I'm gonna close that off. Then say I expect zero to more of those, but I'm not guaranteeing that. But I am saying that I absolutely demand that this string must have at least one uppercase letter. Okay, so what this little code right here says is, we will consider this a valid string if, after the beginning of the string, there is at least one uppercase letter, but it can also contain any of these other letters. That's all that means. This says this will be a valid string if this is true as well as this is true. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Otherwise you can just go and copy this code and be able to validate passwords based off of just tweak in the regular expression. But remember, I also wanna make sure that there's at least one lowercase letter. So I can technically just come in here, grab this code right here, come in here and paste it and then come in here and change these to lowercase letters. So there's a shortcut way of doing that, and that's gonna to continue to work. And remember, I also said that I want a guarantee that there's gonna be at least one number inside of here. So 
did that right there. And then I also wanted to guarantee that it was going to be at least six digits in length, but it could be numerous different digits. So I'm going to use the backslash uppercase S, which is going to match anything that is not a space, which would include characters and any different types of character codes and so forth and so on. I'm going to say it has to be at least six characters in length. And let's say a maximum of 10 like that. And then I'm going to show you another one. This is backslash Z. That is going to define the end of the string, just like the dollar sign would. But just thought I'd slip something else new in there for you. Actually, I made my password 11 in length, so let's just change it to 12. Go file save. And you can see that it found a password. And no, this is not a password that I ever use anywhere. So don't waste your time if you think this is a password I use. So what does this? It fits all the rules. It has one uppercase letter. It has one lowercase letter. And it has a digit in it. And it is in length between 6 to 12 digits in length. It's actually 11. So this is a way to verify or find what would be a valid password if you wanted to do something like that. Okay, so if you now understand that, you really, really, really understand regular expressions, like you're a pro. Let's go and add to your uh, knowledge base, though. Let's say I want to match all, all strings that begin with the word mail. However, I do not want to match if mail is then followed by the word woman. How would I do that with regular expressions? Okay, so specifically, I'm basically looking for mailman up here, but I do not re want returned mail woman. How do I do it? Well, I come in here. I'm going to define that I want my string to begin and then immediately be followed by the word mail. I'm going to put a lowercase mail in there, but I'm going to fix that in a second. Then I'm going to say specifically here, I will match for any string that begins with mail, but isn't followed by the word woman. And how you do that is a question mark followed by an exclamation mark. And the thing you do not want to match for, or the characters or strings or whatever. And then close that off. And then after my percent sign or my delimiter, I'm going to put I in there. That's going to allow this to be case insensitive. So that's how I'm able to have the lowercase m in there. If I file save it, jump over here. You can see that it found male man, but did not find male woman. However, if I jumped in here and just typed in man again and file saved it, you would see now that it found male woman. Let's say you want to match any string that starts with male as long as it is followed by woman. How would you do that? Well, come in here, just delete this whole thing. And I'm going to say I want to match for male only if it's then followed by woman. So this is kind of like the total opposite of what I just showed you. And then we're going to leave the I in there and keep everything case sensitive. I'll say, or case insensitive. And reload it, and you see male woman shows up. But if I come in here, change that, file save you see mailman pops up. So those are some really complicated ways to use regular expressions. I hope you understood it. If you do understand it, absolutely fabulous. If you don't quite get it, just go download the code. It's all free at newthinktank.com. Play with it. You'll totally get it. Then you'll be a regular expressions pro, be able to parse anything you could ever want to do. In the next tutorial, I'm going to show you all the other things you can do with strings. And then after that, we're going to move on to file I.O manipulating file systems, the pair framework, file upload, networking, database, security, and all the other things you guys have asked me for. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below. Till next time.